say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Flannel Shirt Kitchen. Thank goodness. Early September, you know, most of the time I'm in the dove field this time and right. you can't, you're about to melt. Right. You can't understand it. Today, I think the high was what, the 60s? Yeah. Which made us think about soup, which I love. Soups and stews. You know, the other night we were inside and we just got our bag from Mac. Yeah. And what we had was okra, mm -hmm. celery, and we had cabbage. Had everything, all the good stuff. And we had not laid anything out. It was, it was a really, really busy day on the right. farm. And so many times you dig around, you try to find something. Sometimes, many times, after you've been cooking a while, you know what goes with what, and you come upon a winner. Right. You kept on telling me, that's the best soup I've ever had. It was. But it really wasn't anything special. I liked it. Anything with vegetables, it was delicious. It was, it was good. But just saying that, she kept on, she said, you've got to do that recipe. Yeah, that show. was good. Now, we didn't have any meat laid out. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't been in the store. We hadn't brought any of our uh, beef or pork or anything right. out of the freezer. We were running like crazy people. Mm -hmm. So I ended up making a purely vegetable soup. I'm going to give you that off the top of my head. And then tonight, because we did put some meat out, we're going to have a little kind of a Cajun feast. Now what I've done in the meantime is I'm boiling some water. Now if you're inside, this would be a lot easier. Right. But it's not nearly as fun as being outside. And it's nice out today. It is like nice it. out. And we're going to hopefully start doing a lot more cooking. i got my coals going over here. But here is our first thing that we did the other night. I'm going to give this recipe off the top of my head. I took some butter. We took some carrots, celery, and onion. And we chopped them up pretty fine. In my special little chopper. In your special little chopper that our friends from the show sent us. Yeah. Which everybody said, where did you get that? And apparently you get them from QVC. Okay. I didn't know there's still I this. love this. So anyway, we took our celery, onions, carrot. We took probably, if I had to guess, I would say three quarters of a cup of each. Right. So I sauteed that in butter in a real hot pan, got that turned over fairly quickly. Then immediately we poured four or five cups of water and probably 32 ounces of chicken broth. Right. Then we take bouillon cubes. Then we took some fresh okra and cut that up fairly small. Mm -hmm. Love the taste of okra. Right. Then we took some cabbage and cut that up small enough so it would really get done quickly. We already had a rolling boil going. So boom, everything is getting done pretty quickly. We're gonna kinda do the same thing tonight if you wonder why I'm saying this, but this yeah. was her favorite soup. Then we came back with nature's seasoning. This is one of my favorite seasonings right here. That was good. Now I use that along with the bouillon. Now if you want a really good soup base, anytime with chicken bouillon, use cubes, use this, and anything green is gonna be absolutely Amazing. beautiful. And one more thing about that, we did put a little bit of rice in there. Now the last thing we added on that soup the other night that you thought it was best in the world was a little bit of fresh basil off the back porch. And it was absolutely wonderful. Now how about this? Now we got this from Story. Now later in the show, we're gonna talk about urban gardening. We're gonna talk about somebody who's smack dab in the middle of the city and is growing stuff like this. Story, Sloan. I used to work with Tim Sloan mm -hmm. with Fish and Wildlife. It's his daughter. Okay. Her degree was in sustainable agriculture. Really? And she's got some tricks on a fall garden, which is time to put out right now that we're going to find out in a little while. Are you going to put that in our soup? I'm going to put that in our soup tonight. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started because everything's ready. So here's what we're going to do. Tonight's soup is a little different. We've got crawdaddies. This is our cranking crawdaddy soup. <laughs> now in the old days, we used to call them crawdads. Right. So this is crawdaddy soup. They call them crayfish or whatever. We have some. They've already been boiled. We're gonna pop their tails off and use only their tails because we're gonna pop the heads off and all the legs and make a stock for another thing we're doing later. Okay. And tonight it's just tails. So let's go ahead and cut this stuff up and get it going. All right, what do you want first, onion? Yes. And we're not trying to sell this. I just like it's it. It's just fantastic. 
That's it. That's good. That's all you want. Keeps the <laughs> keeps the dag on onions out of your eyes. Boom. Let's get that going. Now let's go ahead with the carrots. Okay. All right. Then our celery. So as that softens up and it's almost there, it smells and all those really good. Flavors release into that butter. In a second, we're going to dump that into the pot. Okay. Let's go ahead and cut our okra up. Okay. chicken broth. It's probably about 28 ounces. Then we're going to pop the okra in, Nikki, if you will. We're going to take a little bit of basil, put in there. We're just going to drop some six or eight leaves. Now our bouillon cubes. And Nikki's going to cut the cabbage up into smaller pieces. All right, now we're going to take about a half of a head of cabbage here. We're going to take this sausage. We're going to saute it just a little bit. All right, this is made in Evergreen, Alabama. Something else we're gonna make tonight is some spoon bread. If you look up the history, it's pretty interesting. There's actually a spoon bread festival in Kentucky. Now they say that the roots go all the way back to Native American, it's, it's, but it's actually more of a souffle. It's kind of spongy and delicious yeah. and wonderful. Now let's take some of Story's pepper there. And this is just for taste, just a little bit. We don't have to use much. Can I put it in my chopper? You can put it in your chopper. I love my chopper. How much you got? Let's see what you got. A little more net? Yeah, let's do just a little bit more. I'm gonna brown that with these sauces. You know what that's gonna smell that's like. That's good. Okay, that's good. Now you notice we're doing everything kind of fine. The whole goal here is to get this done as quickly as possible. So here's our peppers. Thank you, Story. Oh, yum. They're gonna go in with these sausages. Now you see where we're going? It a little smells bit of a amazing. Separation from the process we had the other night. Now, Nikki, if you will, all right, get your little bowl and start snapping the tails off those crawdads. Alrighty. All right. Now, when I was a kid, we called them crawdads. That's just what everybody called them. What'd you call them? Crawfish. I remember crawfish. The kids would get them out of the creeks. Yeah. Crawfish. And I guess the proper name is actually crayfish. Oh, is it crayfish? Uh, I suppose crayfish. I don't know. But whatever they are, I like to eat them. Yeah. Look like little lobster tails. Well, it's about that same flavor. So our sausages are almost done. All right. We got us a good boil going on over there. Okay, if you remember last week's show, we did a stack. Right. We're not gonna do a stack tonight because we got tripod going. But we are gonna time things out so our bread finishes up about the same time as that. We're going 450 on our spoon bread, which we'll start in a minute. So we gotta start thinking about, and that's the great thing about this, we got our coals going. We're gonna drop right. them right over there, plop them right on top. Yep, we're going to dump our sausages and peppers. And I'm coming in with my crawdaddies. Then we're going to stir that up, get a good boil going, and look what we've got. Now, the one thing we're going to add, some nature seasoning. Then, our next seasoning is our Tony's Extra Spice. And we're going to put about the same amount. If I had to guess, it's, it's probably a half of a half of a tablespoon. Then I'm going to take a little black pepper. Now, I'm going to taste as I go along to make sure it's where I want it to be. I'm going to get that up to a good boil. Put the top on and let it roll. So once that fire burns down, it's going to simmer. So we're going to let it go about 40 minutes. And the real kicker is we're going to test it to see when the cabbage is nice and soft. Okay, we've let that go just a little while. Now we're going to add three quarters of a cup of rice. All right, now that we got that going, we're going to try to time these out, which okay. we often do. So let's go with the spoon bread. And this looks pretty simple. Bread the camping. Bread. Think about yeah. camping. Think about your outside convenience sake. There are plenty of recipes out there right. where you can do this homemade. But if you're camping on a trip, a bag's good. But Weisenberger has it just like this, and they have directions. You just pour three quarter cups of water in here. Okay. And we pour this in. It's pretty simple. Okay. So three quarters of a cup of water. That's our start. We'll get that mixed in. Now, we're going to have this in a fairly hot pan, so I'm going to put a little bit of water in the bottom of this pan. All right. Now we're going to add, a, we have a cup of water left that, that okay. we have to add in thirds. So, okay. we're gonna do, so I'm going to do about a third of a cup. 
All right. It says to stir it in. That's the directions say. Now, will that not be a nice addition to our recipe? Oh, over yeah. Here? Now, normally, we share everything. We share bowls of stuff, but here we're going to have our own little ramekin of spoon bread. Now, they actually make spoon bread dishes to cook right. it in. Now, a Tater Knob has some that actually are for spoon bread. And they sell it with the bread, so you can buy a whole kit. It's, it's yes. perfect. Yeah. But we're going to have little ramekins here that we're going to put in 450 degrees. How much is that on top and bottom? 2211. You are sharper than a I paid attention. Out. I'm telling you. Uh, All right. So just divide them up even, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and set the coals out over here while you're doing that. All right. So we're always gonna stay in the tenderfoot mode because we want folks who are just tuning in to know that there's a combination that you can use. They have books, so on and so forth, for a particular temperature. There may be plenty of times when you see us using a fire that's burnt down and eyeballing it. But tonight, we have found out that you guys really do like our cowboy cooking, so we're gonna do a lot of that. We're gonna take a little bit of water, put it at the bottom here we're gonna have a hot pan, we don't wanna scorch it. Now, being that this pan is not real hot yet, we think about cooking time. Our cooking time is gonna be about a half hour. And again, and again, it's gonna be at 450 degrees. So it's gonna take a minute to get going. We're probably looking at about 40 minutes. All right, now we got our spoon bread started. Okay. We have our soup. It's gonna be done shortly. Okay. Now, I checked the soup earlier. The cabbage is about there. The rice is popping. Mm -hmm. It's almost done. So the next time you see us, we're going to be inside because it's going to be dark. It's getting dark earlier, and isn't it? And you will not be able to see us. And I clean the cabin. Let's get in there. The cabin looks, is clean. But before, before we go there, a lot of people are thinking about right now a fall garden. Mm -hmm. There's stuff you can put out right now. Mm -hmm. Let's go visit with our friend Story. Now, I knew her from when she was like this tall. <laughs> She's taller than that now. It's Tim Sloan, yeah. who I used to work with Fish and Wildlife. Right. It's his daughter. There's a few tips here that really helped us right. in our gardening. Her garden her garden's wood, amazing. Wood chips. Yeah, I like that. Wait until you see what she's done with a small amount of space, and we're using her peppers tonight. That's right. So here's a story, and she's going to tell us a little story. All right, we're doing something today I've wanted to do for a long time. Say you live in the city, but your heart's in the country. What are you gonna do? You can do a little urban gardening. This is Story. Hi. Good to see you. I used to work with your daddy for about 38,000 <laughs> years. Where did you go to school and what did you study? Um, I went to Sterling College in Craftsbury Common, Vermont, and I actually self-designed a major in sustainable land management, small homestead business, um, sustainable agriculture and some small woodlot management. So what have you done here? What have you tried to do with this small lot for yourself? Um, well, my yard was too small to have a garden and didn't really have any sunlight. And this lot was just part of a rental property that wasn't being used. And so I got access to it. Less than a quarter of an acre. Right. I mean, this is small. Yes, it is a small, it's a, it's a large home garden, but it's small in the scope of things that I was doing before I moved to the city. Uh, the soil here was particularly challenging. I brought in some compost and um, a local tree care business. They dropped off uh, a whole truckload of wood chips, which have been really excellent to mulch and keep the weeds down, which if you have a full-time job and you're gardening on the side, you don't want to spend time after work doing a lot of weeding. The mulch is so beneficial. Firstly, it improves the soil, and then it also decreases pest pressure and weed pressure by keeping the soil moisture consistent and then just shading them out. So there's probably about two inches of wood chip mulch around everything in this garden. My goal was to create a low maintenance garden that the bulk of the work was putting it in and then everything else was just maintenance and harvest after that. And it's worked out really great. Can you list off the top of your head what you have here in your garden as I drop an eggplant into it? <laughs> yeah, this is an heirloom pink jewel mini popcorn, kohlrabi, peanuts, a purple cabbage, and a green savoy cabbage, eggplants, and hot peppers. You got peppers coming out of your ears. Yeah, I have a ton of peppers. That's a good I have thing, way though. too many hot peppers. This is a dry bean called uh, gold zuni and then just a green bush bean. 
tomatoes. Um, I see some basil. Yeah, there's basil interplanted throughout everything. Gotcha. Um, I tried to do some interplanting. There is a row of sweet potatoes, a row of oranging okra, which is this orange red okra in the front. So Pretty just on a tiny little lot, you can do a whole lot. I mean, you've yeah. got, I mean, this is just from today, right? Yeah, this is, this is, I harvested a bunch of stuff on Sunday and then came, waited two or three days and came back. Most of this stuff were, was uh, from an heirloom seed catalog called Baker's Creek, which sells rare varieties. And I started uh, probably half of what's in this garden by seed uh, under a little planter in my house. What can I plant right now? It's time for the fall garden. What are you putting out for fall garden? Right, so fall garden is not tomatoes and okra and all of that stuff, but it's more leafy greens. So brassicas like broccoli, kale, collards, cabbages, is radishes. Is that what you've got right here ready to go? Yeah, so these are um, broccoli starts. Um, this is a 45 day cabbage, which um, days to maturity is like a main thing that I look at when I'm trying to decide what I'm going to plant because I'm impatient. So I want the fastest, uh, you want your the food. plant that goes fastest to maturity, just a curly kale. These things, the the kale and the collards and a lot of the leafy greens can even last past a frost if they're mature by the time you get them in the ground, which the time to do that is now. Well, thank you so much for picking me this basket of stuff. <laughs> I'll be heading out now, so nice talking with you. I'm just kidding. I'm not thinking <laughs> this is really beautiful. Thank right you. here, small lot. This is in the city. If you're in the country and you do have a little space in your yard, mm -hmm. you can do a whole lot, can't you? That is for certain. A lot well, more than this. Thank you so much for sharing with us. I appreciate it. And I'm sorry you have to put up with your dad all the time. I had to put <laughs> up with you for almost 30 years. You think you can take it? Yeah. All right. We'll try to. Well, he's standing right over there. He's looking at us. <laughs> I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. He had the biggest feet he didn't buy in the fourth grade. That's because he was 16. But they held him back in the fifth grade. Didn't want him to be in the same class as Daddy. They caught him one long, we got caught cheating on a test in that algebra class. She you took said you wouldn't tell that no more. She took his principal off and she said, these two cheating. He looked at me, he said, Bertie, you cheating? I said, no, sir, I ain't cheating. He said, Lardo, you cheating? He said, no, sir, I ain't cheating. He said, they both say they ain't cheating. She said, I can prove it. She said, look at Bertie's test, question number 12. He wrote, I do not know the answer to this question. He said, well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. She said, look at Lardo's test, question number 12. He wrote, me neither. <laughs> We didn't come here to be laughed at. This is a this was an old poem years ago. Little burglar man. Let's see here. Well, I'll tell you a story about a burglar man that planned to rob a house. Crept right through the window as quietly as a mouse. He dreamed of all the money he'd steal and under the bed he laid. But the things that he would see that night would turn his hair from gray. About nine o'clock, an old maid came in, and I'm tired, she said. Thinking everything would be all right, she got to look under the bed. Well, she took out her teeth, her big glass eye, and her hair from off her head. Scared that burglar half to death when he peeped out from under the bed. Well, the burglar crawled from under the bed, he was a nervous wreck. She jumped on him like a dog on a bone and grabbed him round the neck. She never screamed or whippered. She was quiet as a clam. She said, oh, Lord, I thank you. I got me a man. Well, she pulled a pistol from the drawer and to the burglar said, if you don't marry me, young man, I'll blow off the top of your head. Well, he looked at her teeth and her big glass eye and he had no word to scoot. He looked her in her good eye, said, for God's sake, let it shoot. Now, last time you saw us, we were outside. It's dark out there now, so we decided to come inside, like we got some sense. 
Yum. Oh, just like the other night, except you got crawfish except in it. Except we got some meat in there. Can you smell that? Mm -hmm. Is that not beautiful? It smells wonderful. There's our spoon bread. I like to get a little brown on top, so it, it came out time-wise just perfect. Good. So with your conventional oven, if you do it that way, just remember to get you preheated. Our pan was not preheated, so I let it go an extra 10 minutes, but it, it, at that point, it's spoon bread. Yeah. So you stick your spoon in it, look at here. I'm gonna try my soup first. I just wanna look at the consistency. Is that not beautiful? Wow. It's kind of spongy. All right, first of all, we gotta try the soup. Okay. And be careful, because it's it really hot. That's good. It's really good. You know what? Mm -hmm. Last week's soup may have been your favorite ever. This is yours. This might be mine. I like last week's soup awful well. This is... It's delicious. Not that I'm mm. ringing my own bell, mm. but this is really good. It is. I love all the vegetables. Ooh, it's peppery. How do we eat these? Mm. Gotta let mm. them cool. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, we can set it so aside and flavor those. Now, those, those are going to have yeah. great flavor, too, because they've been flavored by everything else. Wow. Yeah, I did yourself again. That is really, yeah. really, really good. Yes, it is. Now, if we wanted to, I doubt if the law would... I'll try it. What if we just popped it right in there and got a little salt in it? Sop some soup up with that. So it's kind of like cornbread, but it's, I mean, how do you describe that? That's really good. It is kind of like a souffle. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely delicious. That is really good. Well, yeah. you know what? This makes me very happy. I like this kind of cooking. And the other night, a lot of the stuff we do is absolutely what we have in the fridge or mm -hmm. what we have laying out on the counter or what we've got on the counter that we've grown right. in the garden or somebody else has grown or... This, to me, is fantastically wonderful, beautiful stuff. Show me how to eat this. Are right, you just kind of squeeze this in, pop it out. Grab it with your teeth. Look here. Squeeze it down, I'll grab it with your teeth. Suck it out. A little lobster. Yum. <laughs> mm. So you get an extra added bonus. You get to play with your favorite oh, wow. But having that shell lets that flavor out. That's good. It gives you that good, earthy, mm. wonderful, beautiful flavor. You know what? If you like the sound of this recipe, I know we can get 8,500 million billion gazillion other ones. That's a lot. Trazillion. Mm -hmm. Where would you go? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Not only recipes, <laughs> but how-tos, how to build things like smokehouses, pig pens, right. how to raise critters on a small amount of land. We encourage you to check out TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Check out our YouTube views. Or when you view our stuff, it's on YouTube. Okay. Make sure you hit subscribe, a little red button. Hit subscribe. And that way, every time a new recipe comes out or a new segment comes out, mm. it comes directly to your email. You I need to do that. Notified yeah, of I need it. To yes, do that. I don't even know if we're subscribed. <laughs> but make sure you hit the subscribe button on timfarmerscountrykitchen.com if you'd like to be our, and we don't call them fans or viewers, we call them friends. That's right. If you'd like to be our friend, come to our Facebook page, which is Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. What do you do? Hit like. Boom, hit like. That's all you gotta do. You don't have to ask to be our friend. All you have to do is hit like and you're on board. It's <sighs> time. To make a lot of clinking noises I eat because we're, I'm gonna get ugly and dive in. Yeah. Here and we don't. Nobody wants to see that. No. But because we're gonna dive in, let's go ahead and sign off and say that we have a brand new show next week. But right now, it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. Squeeze one out there. I'm not as good at it as you. Uh, Am I doing can, it? Grab it with your teeth. There you go. Mm, see I what I'm it. saying? I Boom. did it. See, mm. you got it now. Oh, I got it. Mm, that's yummy. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to... CKY, Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.